Welcome to the Easy Baby Podcast, where we share practical tips and information to make your pregnancy and the first months of your baby's life the best they can be. Visit easybaby.co.za for more information on our online courses. Hello moms and dads and welcome to the Easy Baby Podcast. It is episode 8 and today we are going to be talking all about sleep. Now of course I'm not the sleep expert, uh, so I looked far and wide and I found myself the sleep expert. Um, I have Una van Staden in studio. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you Mark. Thanks for having us in studio. Oh, it's wonderful to have you here. Now Una's from Piccanini. Uh, Piccanini been going for about 10 years. Yes, Piccanini, yeah. Piccanini. How long have you been in? Involved. I've been involved um, with Piccanini Baby Academy since 2010. Okay. Um, started off with Karen Fransel, who's also an early childhood development expert. Started off with the uh, stimulation power of play workshops, mm-hmm. and have bought over the company from Karen in March 2014, and now um, condensed what we offer, um, specialising in sleep and routine consultations. Mm-hmm. I do baby care or nanny training on site in the parent's home, as well as the age-appropriate stimulation workshops. Okay, now the first question that I generally get <laughs> if I recommend uh, if I recommend something to do with sleep with the moms and dads, the first thing they say is it sleep training? Because I'm not keen to sit in another room and listen to my baby cry. Is what you do sleep training? Mark, I prefer to introduce myself as a sleep coach and not a sleep trainer. And I'll quickly give you the difference. For me, a sleep coach, we come with the perspective that we have a look at the baby's sleep, their routine, their diet, the, the st- amount of stimulation that takes place during the day. Um, I'm not an advocate of letting a baby fall asleep while crying. Um, I do believe that you are your, your child's trusted source of comfort and you need to be there. Sleeping is a milestone. So you are highly unlikely going to put a little one on tummy time, for example, which is another milestone, and leave them to cry in a room and walk out. You're going mm. to be there with them while it's uncomfortable. And that is what, what we recommend or the processes that we use um, at Piccanini Baby Academy when it comes to sleep. If we have a look at sleep training, if you go and have a look at the dictionary definition of mm-hmm. sleep training, it's the process of training young children to fall asleep on their own, typically by means of techniques in which the child is left to cry without being comforted, either for gradually increasing periods of time or until they eventually fall asleep. Okay, so this is the this harks back to the ferberization of babies yeah. and l- let them cry it out, the cry it out method, they'll be fine. Mm-hmm. And the problem with that is it's a very passive way of yeah. looking at, yeah. the, the, at I, your child's I sleep. I do ability. believe that, that sleep problems or sleep habits go far beyond just the process of falling asleep. Mm. So when I do a sleep consultation, I go and have a look at how do we, not how do we get a baby to fall back asleep again, which mm. would be controlled crying, but why is the baby waking up in the first place? Okay. Sometimes, you know, it's age appropriate. A lot of moms have a misconception of, at what age a baby should sleep through. I don't expect a six-week-old baby to sleep through. You Some parents to, do that. You have to manage their expectation as Absolutely. to how, much, uh, how yeah. many yeah. hours is this baby It's actually asleep. quite interesting. when, Even when we have a baby who really has bad sleeping habits, once I ask the parents to start keeping a log, a day log, and an evening log, you'll be surprised at how long the babies actually do sleep. It might not feel like that for the parents because, remember, before you were a parent – You used to get your seven or eight hours sleep, uninterrupted sleep. Now, because you're getting interrupted sleep, it seems really bad. But if you go and log it, you actually see that your baby's actually getting 10 hours sleep at night. There could be 35 minutes of awake time, two or three, you know, within the evening, broken down into two or three awake sessions. So once you actually start logging it, and then you can actually see how long your babies are actually sleeping. This is really interesting because... Um, for the baby, it's not broken sleep because your baby is coming up and down. They're doing exactly what they are naturally supposed, supposed to, to do. do. But for you as the parent, it's broken mm-hmm. sleep. So you kind of look at the baby and go, oh, she's not sleeping at all because you're not sleeping properly. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's quite tricky. Um And as we chatted off air just now as well, a lot of the parents are are scared to ask for advice. They're scared to get in a sleep trainer, if you want to call it that. As I said, we do sleep coaching. For me, I always try and tell my parents, you haven't done anything wrong. Mm. Sleeping is a milestone. 
Because is it kind of they're admitting failure? Well, it's, for them mean. it seems like it. Yeah. You know, I have to get somebody to fix my problem for me. Mm. But all they really need is somebody to guide them and to help them through the process. And that's a different story as well. I often have parents who say, please, can you come in, do a sleep consult, stay in my home for three nights and sleep train my baby. Mm. And for me, a habit doesn't get broken in three days. So I don't do that. I don't go that okay. process. We do 21 days of follow-up support with the parents. And I think that gives them, uh, you, you look for the positives, hmm. not always the negative. And asking for help, asking for somebody to assist you is a sign of strength and not a sign hmm. of weakness. Because it's a difficult position. I mean, as guys, we say some, some dumb stuff sometimes hmm. uh, because we come, we come along and we say, well, why is a baby not hmm. sleeping? Uh, genuinely, what we might mean is, um, what can I do? Hmm. Or hmm. is there something else hmm. we can do? Because Jack down the road, his baby's sleeping hmm. and ours is not. Hmm. The problem is moms tend to take that as like, uh, it, it, you, you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, I'm judging you. I'm judging your ability. Hmm. That's when the aunts come in hmm. and the grannies and everyone hmm. that's trying to, all from a good place, hmm. 99% of the time are yeah. trying to help. Yeah. It all comes across as you're failing, yeah. you're failing. And it's not the case. At the end of the day, I'd like to have as many family members as possible involved in the sleep consultation when I do the private oh, consult. Oh, right. Okay. So that everybody's on the same page. And everybody hears the message from you. Everybody starts yeah. from a level playing yeah. field. And, and we do find that if, if the dad is not going to keep up with what we've suggested, then I suggest for those 21 days that the mom actually tackles this on her own. Mm. And and not because we also have nannies. Nannies play a big role in, mm. in babies as well. Um, we have a lot of babies. You see them, the newborn babies who really mm. battle to sleep. They battle to, to fall asleep. They battle to stay asleep. And I do believe that swaddling plays a big role when mm. it comes to our newborn babies. But I would say the majority of, of sleep problems start between four and five months. Babies' nutritional needs change. And then obviously sleep expectations have also been mm. set in. So it depends what, on what kind of habits the baby has sure. been got used to um, at that age. You've, you've opened my eyes right now to something that I didn't think of. You were sleep training a whole house. Well, not sleep training, but you are working with a whole mm -hmm. house. Mm -hmm. You are um, organizing an environment mm -hmm. which consists of the environment. Mm -hmm. It consists of the participants. And if you're going to be a participant, you've got to be part mm -hmm. of what we're doing. We're not sleep organizing the baby. No. We're doing it for I, the I baby coach, knows what they're doing. I We're coach doing, the adults and the caregivers. We're coaching the adults. Um, you know, we have nannies when mm. mommy's not around. N nanny puts the baby on their back. It's the easiest place for a baby to fall asleep. Mm -hmm. And if the baby falls asleep very easily during the week and the mom battles on a weekend, that is the f one of my first questions. How does the nanny put the baby to sleep? Mm. Culturally, there are differences. Sure, massive. And if mom is not going to put the baby on her back to sleep on a Saturday and Sunday, the baby's not going to sleep because that is their sleep expectation. Yeah. And baby's going, hang on a second. And it's actually, yeah, it's unfair because we confuse the babies. And then we get frustrated as a parent because the baby won't sleep. Mm. And it just is a vicious cycle. Okay. I'm with you. I'm with you. We've got so much to cover. We've got so much to talk about in terms of sleep. So I want to talk about a couple of mistakes uh, that we make. Traps is probably a better word because uh, we're doing the things we, we think are the right things or we're doing the best things mm. we know how. Mm. But sometimes we could maybe just change those slightly mm. and we could get a much mm. better result. Uh, so watching awake times. Mm. I'd like to talk to this. Yeah. So we work on, on, on baby sense principles that a baby can only stay awake for a certain period amount of time before their stress levels kick in. And I think it's age appropriate and we have to move with the age appropriate times according to the baby's age. So you cannot expect a six week old baby to have the same amount of awake time as a one year old toddler. What are we expecting okay, from a six so week old baby? If we have a look at a six week old baby, they cannot be awake for more than an hour at a time before their stress levels kick in. And before their body starts pumping adrenaline into them and they don't react properly and okay. So so the trick over here is sixty minutes is not a long time and really let's say for example the little one woke up at six o'clock in the morning. By seven o'clock they should be asleep again. And that's one of the Think the, of the everything you have to do Everything in that, that you now have to do in that hour is 
feed baby, burp baby, nappy change, stimulate your baby, mm. make them drowsy to be able to fall asleep again. And I think, Mark, this is where we need to just thrash out this a little bit when it comes to feeding a baby. Mm. We do not need to feed a baby every time before they go to sleep. You told me this. I was When I first heard that, I was like, really? <laughs> it all depends on how long the baby sleeps. Let's take, for yeah. example, a six-week-old baby. Mm. If they have a sleep cycle of 45 minutes... Baby sleeps for 45 minutes, is awake for an hour before they need to go back to sleep again. We don't necessarily have to feed a baby every one hour, 45 minutes, unless they're going through a growth spurt, which generally lasts 24 to 48 hours. So, yes, you might have two or three days in that specific week where that would be the Mm. case. But generally, I'm tempted not to use the word overfeed the baby Mm. because it has other implications as well. Um, But... A baby can really go to sleep, and and I I do believe that a soother or a pacifier or a dummy does play a role Mm. in a good sleep routine. It just becomes a problem when the baby's nine months and older, and they're constantly using their dummy through the day. So I really believe a dummy is great for little ones. Mm. It's a calming receptor. I don't use a dummy to keep a baby quiet. Mm. And mom, if you're breastfeeding, please, you need to try and find a dummy that simulates how the baby's feeding. Because yeah. like the Americans have got it right, it's a pacifier. Absolutely. It's there to pacify. Mm-hmm. It's not there to block the mm-hmm. hole so that we don't hear the noise. Yes. Yeah. Okay, I'm with you. Um, I also wanted to talk about um, babies needing, with these awake times, they need to process yeah. this information mm-hmm. that they get. Because mm-hmm. a baby's life, everything is new. They, they, literally every experience they have is a new mm. experience and they have to take time mm. to be able to move that experience into their longer term yeah. memory. Yeah. So what happens is um, we've not sh- spoken about how often babies should be sleeping, but how long should a baby be sleeping per sleep? And that is mm. also important for us to discuss. We recommend a minimum of 45 minutes per sleep to a maximum of three hours for our That's the babies. cycle we're looking that at. Is the cycle. Minimum 45, max three hours. Absolutely. So sometimes your babies could have five 45 minute sleeps a day, and sometimes they'll have two long sleeps of three hours. It doesn't matter how many times a day your baby sleeps. Okay. As long as they're not being kept awake for too long in, the, in their awake time, and as long as they, we try not to fall into the trap of letting them sleep for longer than three hours, then we get mm. day night reversal, which is a Totally different habit. Oh, so day night reversal can come off having sleeps that are longer than three hours. Absolutely, absolutely. And then we have the constant wakings at night because your baby has now switched day and night. That's why during Mm. the day for day sleeps, we recommend that some form of natural light comes into the room. I don't block out the room at night. Your baby needs to be able to sleep with light in the room so that they know that that is. In the evening, it's much easier for us. We recommend that we do bath time. Your bath time signals to your baby that it's an evening sleep. It's a bedtime Mm. for for the night. So that is how... um, Often your baby should be sleeping and for how long they should be sleeping as well. Um, If you have a look at at processing information, which is very important, we all know how important it is to stimulate our babies. Mm. What we really need to do is to grow the connections in their brain. So the babies are generally all born with the same amount of brain cells. It's the amount of time that you spend stimulating your baby that will grow the connections, which increases their intelligence okay. and their IQ. Um, so that is why we recommend at least 45 minutes. If you take yourself, for example, if you've crammed through the night for an exam and you write that exam the next morning, when you walk out of that exam it's room, gone. it's gone. You've lost that information. Hmm. Unless you've slept on it, you actually haven't processed that information. You need to take that time to move it through. Okay, and without that, it just becomes gobbledygook and it's... Just, you're going to have to redo the same thing. You're going to have to redo the same thing. Overtiredness is a big deal because when babies get overtired, they've gone past that ability to be able to regulate mm-hmm. themselves. Now, how do we approach getting them to sleep? Do we wait for signs? Um, do we do we hit the first sign of overtiredness and then act? How, how do we approach I, it? I really like it. I'm glad that you said hit the first sign. I had a client a few years ago who said she waits for her daughter to yawn three times before she acts on her tiredness <laughs> but mommy I gave you, you the sign <laughs> I gave you that sign three <laughs> minutes ago please act on it yeah. so you need every baby's different babies show different signs of tiredness mm-hmm. rubbing their eyes losing eye contact they push you away with their arms they close their eyes with their hands or uh, 
with the or close their ears. Um, older they've, children become fidgety as well. They've that taken is, in too much. It's they too fall much. Now they need to process. Now. Absolutely, they really need some time out for their sensory system to reset because okay. that is what sleep does. And it actually give resets you, your sensory system. And they give they, you the physical signs. They that give you I'm the physical full. signs. Yes. So you need to just have a look at your little one. Have a look at the physical signs. It's almost when those physical signs become. Um, a little bit more elevated or the babies really start getting into distress that we've actually missed that sleep cue. What we then need to do is to, you might actually need to take your baby into a quiet, calm room and actually calm them down by doing some form of calming sensory input. Well, I wanted to ask you because sometimes you do miss the, mm. the cues. What do you do if, if you've you missed miss the cue? If you miss the cues, the best is not to try and fight with your little one to try and put them to sleep because they are now what we call a hyper alert baby. They've been overstimulated. How do they get overstimulated? They're in that panic. It's like that. It's that you, panic you mode. You talk about right? the yeah. panic so state. They, yeah. they overstimulated by number one, either being awake for too long. We can talk about sensory input with the TVs, where the dads really don't like this when I discuss this because that is what dads do. They think sitting with a little one watching TV is is. Uh, bonding time mm. moms and dads spend time with babies differently and we do you do <laughs> and then also playing with the little one too much or too much face time i okay. often have it in the six months age group where the little ones are actually learning to sit on their own and we tip out a toy barrel in in front of them mm -hmm. on top of the on the carpet and there's just way too many toys lying around and the little ones get overstimulated because they actually don't know which one should they take and which one should they leave and they never actually master a toy because mm. all they're doing is picking something moving, up moving, and moving, moving it till the next color catches they are. Um, so what we recommend, if you've missed those cues, and it, it can happen, mm -hmm. so, you know, you're not staying, I don't advocate that my parents stay at home. The moms also need to go out. It's really not good for moms to stay indoors the whole time with mm -hmm. your new baby. Um, is that you actually then take your little one into a quiet environment and do some calming sensory input. So singing to them, reading them a story, massaging, anything that is quiet and calm to calm them okay. into... Tone into, of voice, nice absolutely. and lilting, very hold them close. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And swaddling? You a fan of swaddling? I'm a huge, huge fan of swaddling. Okay. Um, there's obviously different methods of swaddling in South Africa. There's quite a lot of new products that have come into South Africa where, um, in which we, the way we can swaddle the babies. For me, if you go and have a look at a newborn baby, most newborn babies will lie on their back, their arms up next to their head, mm -hmm. and their legs crawled up into the fetal position. Okay. It's quite difficult to swaddle a baby in the traditional swad swaddle. Mm. when that is the position that they like. So um, I really, really like to use a, a specific product called the Love to Dream Swaddle, okay. where the baby's actually zipped into this sack, a sleep sack, mm -hmm. with their arms in that upright position. Oh, I, I saw that yesterday. I saw that yesterday, I yeah. mean, Mark, if I'm, if I'm allowed to say this... Um, it's I cool. They look baby. like little Red Bull flyers. <laughs> yeah. They're amazing, yeah. I had saw a baby yesterday, six weeks old. He really, really battles to sleep during the day. The mm -hmm. biggest complaint from the mommy is that his arms and legs are always all over the mm -hmm. place and he wakes himself He's up giving with what himself. we call the startle mm -hmm. or the moral reflex. Mm -hmm. I swaddled the baby in, in my demo sleep sack and three and a half hours later, he was still asleep. Wow. I eventually told the mommy to wake him so that we don't get the Yeah, so you don't get rest. past that. Yeah. 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 Wow. So swaddling really, really gives the baby that sense of containment. Um, and sense of security. That so, they need. so like we were saying, it's not that you're doing things wrong. It's just sometimes there's a trick. There's a trick. There's some. There's a little bit extra that if we just put it in, and that is where someone like you mm -hmm. comes in. Please feel free to contact the show at any time with questions you may have or topics you would like us to cover in future shows. Email us at info@easybaby.co.za. Sleep comfort and taglets. Okay. How so, do we feel about taglets? Yeah, taglets, any form of blanket. It could be a navy hand towel that you cut down the middle. It doesn't have to be anything specific. Mm -hmm. It is just a soft piece of fabric or that you have near your baby's face when we put them to sleep. That becomes a sleep signal for your baby. So it is dual purpose. Number one, we have a soft piece of fabric every time near the baby's face when we put them to sleep. It starts to smell of the parents, which is a comforting smell for okay. the little one. In fact, my mommies who breast milk, I advise them to put some breast milk onto the taglet okay. so that baby always feels that they're close to mommy. They have a very good sense of smell. Their senses are perfect. They haven't been polluted as ours has mm -hmm. in however many years. So sure. that really, really helps. For the older children, every time you pick up that sleep association and you show it to a six-month-old or a nine-month-old baby, that baby goes, she wants me to sleep. 
it is a sleep association. Okay. And a lot of the moms are scared to use it because they say, what happens if I leave it at home? Mm. The 10 times a year that you leave it at home, you might have a rough day. Yeah. But the other times of the year, okay. I have six-month-old babies. When I bring that sleep association close to their face, they close their eyes. They close their eyes. They know that it's time yeah. to sleep. Have loved baby. We yeah. need to give them that sense okay. of, of comfort. Would I be right, though, in saying if you are going to go down this road, then that taglet or that little blankie is literally only for sleep Absolutely. time. Absolutely. It can't be a comfort. It's if not you a introduce comfort. it at another time, you break the magic spell around yeah. that. Yeah. So for, for the little ones up until the age of nine months, we ha- just use that and, and a dummy. I, I really believe that a dummy or a pacifier really works for a little mm-hmm. one. Um, not feeding them to sleep every time they need to go to sleep. You can use a pacifier to calm, the calming mm-hmm. receptor for the baby. is for them to have that sleep association for every sleep. They can't have it in the car just because they're moaning in the car. And, okay. and I'm Mike, I know that you see a lot of babies who moan in the car seats, yeah, and that but, is something that... this is that, not what that is yeah, for. This is, is specific. Comfort. It's just for sleep. Talking on um, the, the kind of the, the heading of comfort, when you have a baby in a bed and they kick a lot, and is it, is it, is it a good idea to put something around close to where their feet are? Are they trying to kick for a reason? What's the... So a lot of the moms say that my baby gets hot at night, they kick their blankets Yes, this off, is what so I hear. Yeah. So we have to look at the, and this is another thing that we do in our assessment, is what is your room temperature? Because to expect a baby to sleep in a room of 28 degrees. Not going to happen. It's not going to happen. So, I mean, uh, aircon is not affordable for everybody. So Mm -hmm. we need to go and have a look at what other methods we can use, dress the baby a little bit lighter, etc. But I do believe that the babies are kicking because they're looking for a boundary. If I tell the moms, go and have a look back at your scans that you had. Where are your baby's feet Mm-hmm. In your pregnancy scans, they're touching something, and and we put a baby into a cot. The moms assume that the baby needs to either go in the middle of the cot or the top end of the cot, mm. and then they tell me that the baby wriggles the whole night. They're restless. They're kicking the yeah. whole night, or you'll find the baby sleeping sideways in the cot, and that for me is a clear indication that the baby's actually not restless. They're just looking for a boundary, and they will kick and kick until they find a boundary. So when we do the sleep consultation, I always recommend that we put the baby towards the bottom end of the cot, dual purpose once again. Mm-hmm. Number one, the baby has found a boundary from the start. You don't have that restless kicking because they've already got the boundary. Okay. And secondly, if if, if it's winter and you're using a blanket over the baby, the blanket can't move over the baby's head because the baby's already positioned. Okay. That the blanket okay. can't move over. In terms of that, what do you think about those weighted sheets? Weighted sleep sacks are wonderful to use. Okay. Um, once again, just make sure that you're not overdressing the baby. Moms, I do think we do tend to overdress our children. Good. And what we need to understand is that everybody, everybody's body temperature is different. I might be wearing a jersey today and you're sitting in shorts. Mm. It's a different, st- you know, everybody's body temperature is different. So the weighted sleep sacks are really good. We started using another product called, he's a Shaun the Sheep, mm-hmm. the, the, ca- the oh, cartoon know, character. The sheep, yeah, yeah. We have a, a, a weighted bean bag. <clears throat> that okay. we use for our older children as a sleep association. So a lot of the times the babies will sleep just because there's some deep pressure on them. So the deep pressure releases serotonin, yeah, which helps it for um, helps so, the baby. So you're doing dual purpose there. Yeah. You've got them with a sleep association and yeah. you've got yeah. them with the deep pressure. Yeah, so the baby sends sleeping bag, those all any form of weighted blanket okay. is really good for the younger babies. From about four to five months of age, you can move over to a product like Shaun the Sheep. I don't okay. recommend it with the little, you know, smaller babies. Okay. To talk to me a little bit about bath time and okay. bedtime. I firmly believe that bath time and bedtime routine should be combined. From the minute that you put your little one into the bath, depending on the age, to bedtime should not be more than 45 minutes. And okay. the reason for that is that we lose the effect of the warm water. So the warm water releases melatonin. We all sleep best after a warm bath. Mm. And that is why you should try not to skip bath time. With, with newborn babies. Um, and there's a school of thought out there that says newborn babies don't have to be bathed every day because they're not dirty. Because they're not dirty. It's not about ba- bathing them because they're dirty. It's about the warm water. It's a calming, bonding activity for the little one, um, which releases good feel hormones before they go to sleep. So my advice to, to parents or to moms is not to let your baby bath before daddy comes home. 
Mm. Do whatever else you need to. Play with your little one so that dad does have some time with the baby before bath time. Because the moms get really upset. They've bathed the baby. Everything's quiet. Mom's doing the last feed of the night and then dad walks in and then this bomb explodes. Mm. And then we battle for two or three hours to get the little one back down again. Okay, so let the so, bomb explode prior to the bath. Yeah, so okay. let them play before bath time. Dads need to buy into this. Um to once babies had bath time, I keep the babies in the bedroom section of the house. They may not come back into the to the uh, family entertainment areas. There's mm. TVs on. There's bright lights. It's overstimulating. And for it's babies. association again. And it's You've an association. gone. I'm awake. It's awake yeah. time. Yeah. So we go straight from the bath into the bedroom. Um, as I said, that 45 minute period. Once again, the moms are going to ask, but how do I do bath and asleep within mm. 45 minutes when I still need to feed? My babies under the age of three months have half a feed before the bath. They bath. Complete the feed after the bath and they go to sleep. I don't see a problem with that. Um, a lot of the times when we undress newborn babies, they shiver. They use up energy. Mm. They're cold in the bath. And they're crying when we're taking them out the bath because they're ravenous. Because they've used sure. up that energy in the bath. And that is why it's sometimes recommended to do half a feed before the bath. Okay, that is really interesting. I'm, d I'm trying to run through my brain why... I wouldn't tell someone to do that, and I can't think of a reason. Mark, it also depends on the kind of bath that you're using, mm -hmm. the, the position that the baby's going to be lying in. Um, sure, your reflex babies and stuff like that. You don't want to yeah. just put them straight but down. It but it all depends. Ma uh, Mark, I'm an advocate of the tummy tie baby bath. So yeah. buy baby baths in the upright position. Yeah. <laughs> There's no issue. Another one that uh, a lot of moms get into, and I see this a lot, uh, where the baby will feed, especially with breastfed babies, they'll feed, they'll feed. They're so comfortable in that position, and it's such a bonding experience. It's so wonderful. They just fall asleep. And now we have to move them. What is the story with feeding and sleep? How do we associate this? How do we deal with it? Oh, it's a tough one. Um, under the age of six weeks, I have no problem with, it's a privilege as a newborn parent. You can really hold your baby you, t until they're fast asleep and put them down. You can feed your baby to sleep mm. under the age of six weeks. The problem becomes after six weeks when we start creating sleep associations. Okay. The problem just with that is that the baby then has to assume that position and that sucking position every time before they go to sleep. As we said earlier, the sleep cycle is 45 minutes. It's not advisable to feed the baby every hour and 45 minutes if you are using that as a sleep association. And that is where the pacifier really plays a, a, a big role. Um, the one tip of advice I can offer the moms is to try and get a dummy that simulates whatever way you're feeding your baby in. So if you're breastfeeding, a dummy that simulates breastfeeding only makes sense or if you're using a bottle um, make sure that the dummy is the same brand of bottle that you're feeding so that there's no nipple confusion for the little one just when it comes to feeding to sleep um for whatever reason if your baby has that feed to sleep habit for whatever reason they wake up in the middle of the night be it a tummy cramp be it because they're cold the only way in which that baby can go back to sleep is then feeding to sleep. And really, if your little ones are on full solid, six, seven, uh, seven months old, and they're eating enough protein during the day, those babies don't need a feed through the night. And we're going to create this, uh, not even not overfeeding, but an overeating. An overeating. And then what happens is your little one will wake up at 11 o'clock at night because the door banged or the dog barked. Mm. And the only way in which that baby can go back to sleep is by being fed to sleep And again. they need now comfort calories. It's yeah. not energy yeah. calories. And then what happens is the nappy gets fuller. We start doing nappy changes in the middle of the night. We wake our baby fuller. Then the last uh, trap we want to we want to come past, and this, this is a hard one because this is like going up to someone who's stressed and saying, relax. The last thing they do is relax, you know, and you're mm -hmm. probably going to catch a punch in your face for saying something <laughs> like that. But stay calm. Mm -hmm. It's easier said than done. Mm. Um, I think what we also need to realize is that pre pregnancy, in a good way, wreaks a bit of havoc with mom's hormones. Mm. It's a hormonal change that we have when we when we have a baby. Um, and it, we don't expect it to be bliss all day long. But you have to get to a stage where you actually enjoy your baby. Mm. And a lot of the newborn mommies that we see have really got to that point where they're so desperate. Remember, they're sleep deprived. They, they're just struggling with the feeding. They're not quite sure. Do they have enough milk? Don't they have enough milk? So there's a lot of doubt created in, in, in the mommy's mind. Am I cut out for this? Mm. I'm not a natural mother. Should it's I be doing this? the first time I've done anything yeah. like this. Everyone has an opinion. On, Absolutely. You know, am I doing the right yeah. thing? And then everyone will say, don't worry. Your, your motherly instinct will kick in. And yes, we all do. And I, I, I just just need to stress to the moms that you are the best mom your child has ever had. They mm. don't know any different. So as long as you're doing your best, that's good enough for your child. Um, 
but it's it's quite clear where I've seen, um, and I'm not a miracle worker by any means, but just because I'm not emotionally involved, I'm not sleep deprived when I work with that newborn baby who is not mine. Mm. I've had a good night's rest and I can put that baby to sleep. Then the mom really thinks, but I, I really can't do this because yeah. how can she do yeah. it and I can't she do it? She can do it and I can't do it. And then she feels, oh my God, she now feels I'm even, even worse. worse. And I think there what we need to tell the moms is that under the age of three, whatever you experience as traumatic, your child is going to experience as traumatic. So when you are mm. putting your little one to sleep, try and relax. Try and relax your shoulders. Hold your baby. Try not to do eye contact. Try not to talk to your baby. It's time to sleep. You have to sleep. I have to get you to sleep. And it's that <laughs> yeah. shaking and rocking where we actually make it worse. Mm. And, I, and I wish I could sometimes take a resident physio with me when I go and see these mummies because they're so tense. Yeah. And yeah. it's just naturally, you, that is what we do. That is what anyone does in a stressful, stressful situation mm. is you just tighten your whole body. Yeah. And your baby actually feels that. Mm. So relax. You are the best mom that your child has ever had. And once you... We put things into place and to make your routine and your day routine so much easier, then everything else should fall into place. Unless there's a medical reason. Sometimes there's a medical reason that needs to be treated. We might refer the mommy to a doctor. We might need to have ears checked. We might be dealing with reflux. We might be dealing with silent reflux. You know, um, that is best then for us to advise the moms to then seek medical help. Something that I find um, moms are, are sometimes weary about is using a dummy. And then when they do use a dummy, How? When do I use the dummy? Is it something I just use continually just to plug up the sound? Is it so, how and why? And is it a good thing? I like the plug up the sound. <laughs> <laughs> My definition of a dummy or a soother, it's more a soother or a pacifier. Mm. The Americans have got it right by mm. using it, the word pacifier, is for the baby to use it as a calming receptor mm. and not to use it to keep the baby quiet. Um, a dummy really, I do believe, does have a, play a place or have a role mm. when it comes to, to sleep and routine. Under the age of nine months, you can literally use your dummy as a, as a calming receptor whenever the baby needs it. Remember, it's an unfamiliar surroundings for the baby. If you think you as a mom are having a bad time or it's really weird for you, can you imagine how that little baby is feeling? Mm. And that is how we get them to calm. Um, so... From nine months of age, we do recommend that you only use your dummy for sleep time so that we don't have language development um, issues coming in. Um, I do believe that babies need to babble. They need to talk. I, I won't engage in a conversation when, if a toddler talks to me with their dummy in their mouth. Okay. They okay. need to And the chains? <clears throat> Mark, we have a process where we actually teach the little ones to use their, dummy chains, uh, their dummies independently. Mm -hmm. So you need to find a safe dummy chain. Okay. and clip it onto the middle of the baby's clothes mm -hmm. so that they can actually use the dummy. So from four months of age, we teach them, the moms and the caregivers, the nannies, to, to not put the dummy in the baby's mouth for themselves, but to actually take the baby's hand, guide it down the dummy chain, and take their hand and guide their hand to their mouth. So that if your little one is sleeping and we need them to link a sleep cycle, if they have woken up, that they can actually find their dummy and put it in their mouths by themselves. You've taught them so they go and look skill. for it. It's a skill okay. to teach them. Um some doctors, some pediatricians advise putting four or five dummies out in the cot. Mm. For me, just by the time he's found dummy number four, That's he's a wide game. awake. That's he's a game. wide awake. Yeah. Or they throw the dummies out the cot, then <coughs> they start throwing it out. If you can really start at the age of four months teaching your baby how to use their dummy independently, it really, really helps them because you don't have to get up every time the baby stirs. We have a range of mummies in which I, we joke, I call them the dummy pluggers. Mm -hmm. All they do is they get up, they put the dummy in. As soon as they hit the pillow again, the dummy's out and the mom has to go back yeah, again. That's Whereas if you've taught your baby how to use it, they can quite easily calm themselves and fall back asleep naturally. So thank you so much, you know, for coming through and uh, enlightening us as to sleep um, and how to get our babies to sleep and a couple of tricks and tips uh, so, so we can get started now. Thanks for having me, Mark. Yeah, as, as I say, we're here to, to help the parents. We don't judge at all. Mm -hmm. um, it's rough out there for, for everybody. And um, it just makes for a happier home. Um, I do find a lot of the times that there's obviously friction at home between the parents as well because everyone's sleep deprived or mom feels that dad's not helping enough with the little one. So if we can get the baby into a good sleep routine, we do find that the household is also more functional. Okay. Just bearing in mind that it is a new change for you. 
things aren't the same as what they were before the baby was born. It's a massive change and you have to manage your expectation of that change and what's going to happen. And like we were saying right at the beginning, you are managing not just the baby to sleep, you're managing the whole house to be able to get that baby to sleep so that you can sleep, so that you as the parent can be able to be on your best and be able to give your best to your child. It doesn't help that you spend all your time half uh, mm. half awake yeah. in this days yeah. um, when we could uh, attack it properly and we could um, and we could work it out if people want to get hold of you you know how do they do that um, they're more than welcome to visit my website it's www.piccanini.co.za we also have quite an active Facebook page Piccanini Baby Academy on Facebook or they can email me una una at piccanini.co.za um, and my contact details they're more than welcome a lot of the moms call in fact I get quite mum most of my emails come between 11 p.m. and 4 a.m. in the oh, morning. Oh, you as well? Absolutely. <laughs> Moms are so desperate that they turn to emailing at 1 o'clock in the morning asking when is the next available slot. And then I know that it's desperate times. We have to make it make a slot. To and they can happily do that. You don't mind Absolutely. the emails? Absolutely. Emails, I'll answer. It's not an invasive phone call at 4 o'clock in the there morning. There you go. You heard it here. You can happily email you know, any time of the night. It's fine. Uh, so thank you so much for coming through, sharing thank your you expertise much. with us. Uh, I'm sure we'll have another show in the future and we'll be talking about a little bit more specific about about babies if you have any questions uh, that you would like uh, you need to ask in the future please make sure that you send me an email drmarinas at gmail.com um, and then we can get onto that and we can get uh, we can get another show going thank you very much for tuning in um, always great to to be able to spend time with you and always great to be able to bring you the professionals um, in the field to be able to make everybody's life a little bit easier I will catch up with you very very soon soon um make sure that you uh go and check us out on itunes we're on stitcher radio as well we're on tunein.com as well if you feel that the episode has given you uh value and you'd like to give it a rating please give it the rating that you feel is appropriate and uh, we will catch up with you soon but until then enjoy your baby if you enjoyed this episode please subscribe and remember to check out our pre- and postnatal education courses at easybaby.co.za. You got this.